We got our special guests in the building, man. We got Ashley C. to Banks in the building. How you feeling? Hello. But yeah, oh, you go ahead, go, bro. Go ahead, bro. Now, I was going to say, how you uh, get your start in music and everything like that? Um, So really, growing up, I want to say I started out like, nah, maybe doing poetry. For sure. Kind of started off with that, um, writing all the time. And then as I got older, I think in high school, I want to say I was a sophomore, maybe. That's when I kind of started rapping. Like, I was just playing around with somebody. And uh, it kind of went up. It was a boyfriend of mine at the time. We mm-hmm. was just playing around, me, him, and his cousins. And it kind of, like, blew up a little bit. And so from then, they was just like, you need to rap, you need to rap. And so I ain't take it serious. But college, I started taking it serious. For sure. Y'all, uh, what I'm going to say, y'all recorded it that first time when they said you need to take it serious? Um. Well, it was on SoundCloud. Oh, yeah, sure. so it kind of did a little thing. This is when SoundCloud was, like, real, like, popular but it was still mm-hmm. up and coming yeah it kind of did a little thing on soundcloud and so everybody was like you wrong <laughs> uh, for sure that all right now where you from exactly chicago because you've been saying texas you've been saying a lot of shit up here <laughs> <laughs> well honestly i'm from a lot of places but i was born in alabama mobile alabama mm-hmm. okay. um but the first place that i remember just being raised for real is chicago heights mm-hmm. so um i moved back to mobile i want to say maybe third grade but i just kept going back and forth like if i wasn't in school I was in Chicago, so it kind of felt like I never left. Mm-hmm. So between there, I was bouncing back between there until my sophomore year in high school. That's when I moved to Texas. So since then, I guess I've just been kind of dipping back home like usual all the time, home mm-hmm. all the time, but if not somewhere else. For sure. Now you said Chicago Heights. That just that just hit a hard string. I'm from Chicago Heights as well. Oh, where did you um uh, yeah Where did you stay at out there? I stayed well. Literally, I stayed like on 16th, but. Like, um, I, I know it's 16. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm like, I ain't really, like, do too much. Well, I went to school in Matson, mm-hmm. actually. I went to Matson Elementary School. Sure. And then um, around, like I say, third, maybe, I think third, fourth grade, one of them, we moved to Alabama. For sure. I was going to ask, did you go to Wilson? No. <laughs> my sister, my <laughs> sisters sure. did. I didn't go to Wilson. They tried to send me to Madison. They didn't want me to go to Wilson. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> but my sister, she did. For sure. That. <laughs> Would you consider yourself a country girl? Um, Honestly, no. But, yeah, like I'm right in the middle. I'm right in the middle because I could keep it real, like Luke Bryan, all real, real country. We eating country food outside of the mud, dancing. My, like, I could do that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm not I'm not woman. Too much deep into it. It's like a tip tap. So For no. sure. Do you draw any like country influences like when you create music or anything like that? Um, definitely. I try to draw um from every genre, honestly, because everybody has so so much interesting stuff that they do. When you put it into rap, it make it ten times more interesting. Like people don't expect to hear it. Like, you know, say if I did like a country sample. Wouldn't nobody know where that came from. For They'll sure. be interested in it. Like, how she know about you know? And it, I feel like it take you out the box that motherfuckers trying to. Oh, I'm sorry. No, nah, you good. But, oh, okay, <laughs> it take you out the like. box uh, <laughs> that people try to put you in. Right. Um, you know, especially being black, you know, they automatically think you only listen to rap music. So mm-hmm. I kind of try to draw from everything. For sure. Now, um, Alabama actually got a little nice little um, a gathering of artists. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so yeah. they got nice they got, melting pot. For real, they yeah. got a uh, rich boy. They got Young Blue. They had uh, a dope, dope boy. beef for real. Uh, so. yeah. Uh, boom. We got a lot of people out no there. Cap. It's, it's yeah. a lot. No cap. Definitely Valerie Day. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of people in Mobile. It's so many people. I would feel horrible to try to name them because they'll be like, "You forgot about me." <laughs> for sure that. But we have a lot of nice artists in Mobile. I think people should really, really look into to um, the underground. A lot of people kind of see mainstream and run with that, mm-hmm. but it's so many raw artists like behind that. Like, it's crazy. Plug, plug the ones that come off the top end. Okay, so that's what I was thinking. Like, I know for sure Boom, uh, Valerie, everybody know No Cap, uh, Honeycomb Brazy, um, Oh, it's somebody else. It's uh, D-Lo. I, he changed his name, but it's KWS. It used to be KWS D-Lo. I don't know his new name, but mm-hmm. you might find it if you look that up, too. Oh, for sure. Um, Who else we got? I feel like I'm missing somebody. Shy Levy. Um... Uh, it's it's a it's a girl named Jazzalyn. I think... I, I don't know if that's her rap name, but I, I, know, I know it's Jazzalyn. Um, and I think... That's it. I can't. I don't want to say that's um, it. But off my head. Ain't um. Now I'm thinking about it. Ain't like uh, Namir. Why be on Namir from Alabama too? 
I don't know. To be honest, I'm really not too familiar for where he come from, but sure. I've heard that he come from Alabama. I oh, don't yeah, know, for though. sure that. I think so. Either that or like Carolina or something like that. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right, how do you feel all the places you've grown up in, you know, affect your music making process? I think honestly, it, it's 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 cool because I have a lot of different like Chicago, we have a known sound. Um and so does like the southern places that I've been to, they have like their own sound. So I think with me being from in a way like all of these places, I kind of had a free reign to tap in it without it being appropriated. Right. Because it's like a part of who I am and a part of my culture as well. Right. I got a text that say uh, "Young Blue and Flo Millie." Oh <laughs> so, yes, Flo Millie, Flo Millie, shout Millie. Out, shout definitely. Out Flo <laughs> Millie, please, yes, I love Flo Millie. She's crazy. I for love her. For sure, that I forget. My bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, now, she I actually, young. I actually spent some time in um, in Jackson, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So. As a, I would say as a teenager, I, I got a chance to be around New Orleans and Alabama and, and Atlanta and all these places. And that's when I opened my eyes to just different cultures. Because mm -hmm. even though we all come from different places, we low-key come from the same place. You right. Know? Yeah. And we all can relate, you know. So yeah. I would say, what was, what was the major difference you would say growing up in the South compared to Chicago? Um, I'm going to be honest. It's really a lot. They ha We have a lot in common, like, on both ends. They have a lot. Not Texas. I would say Mobile has a lot in common with Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, but the language. That's that right there. Man, it's funny because I lived in Mobile. I cannot keep up with the lingo. Like, they are continuously evolving with the lingo. It's crazy. Language was the biggest thing. Um, and dress, how we dress. Mm -hmm. It's a big difference. I don't want to say twisted. I don't want to get in trouble with nobody on each side. But I'm going to just say, yeah. if you know, you know. I get it. If you know, you know. Mm -hmm. It is a big difference between the two places and how we dress. I definitely get it. I told Jay earlier, uh, I seen a post on Facebook. It said, you ain't from Chicago if your grandma ain't from Mississippi. <laughs> no, like, for real. Literally. <laughs> for real. Literally. And then, two sports. Uh -huh. Um, I, can, I don't really like Texas, so I don't really talk about it much. Mm -hmm. um, but you know how, like, hell we got basketball and it's real real big and mm -hmm. everybody like go crazy about basketball and Texas yep. is football. Oh uh, yeah, definitely. They love football. Like the football Hurt games you over are crazy. that shit. They are crazy. People be lined up like outside trying to get the stands are full. Like just how we got the basketball games. Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like that in my life. I know they'd be for uh, high school games too. They so, yes, that's what I'm saying. They regular lit. high school games. They be packed oh, like yeah. everybody in their grandma up. Standing everybody. up in the bleachers. Yes, mm -hmm. everybody, it, adults, more than kids. For sure. It's definitely, you know, it's definitely culture shocks from Alabama to, to Dallas to back to Chicago. It's culture shocks everywhere, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. that's the best thing about um, bouncing around these places. You get to experience so much, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I remember the first time I actually been outside of Illinois. I went to the um, DMV area. Mm -hmm. It's a different, you know what I'm saying, that um, that experience opened my mind to like mm -hmm. it's real life different people out here. We don't all do the same stuff, you know what I'm saying? We don't all talk the same, dress the same, everything, food, you know? Definitely. For sure, oh yeah, for sure. We can food, we can talk all day about the food. Yeah, yeah, sure. All right, since we on food, you gotta you gotta put it out there. Who got the best food? Don't do it. Don't do that. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be a hundred. If we talking fast food, going out, getting stuff, Chicago. Hands down. Okay. We talking home cooked meals. But <laughs> we talking <laughs> surreal. You feel uh, me? Seafood, all that too. Mobile. For sure. Nobody's seeing Mobile, Alabama on the home cooked. I promise you. I never, I never heard nobody. I ain't even knocking it, but Jeez. I never heard nobody say that about uh, nobody. I ain't it's see, it I'm off. not playing. Really, when you think of Mobile, a lot of people, New Orleans and Mobile are kind of like twins. Mm -hmm. That's really what it is. So we have, like, the whole Creole vibe. We started Mardi Gras. Like, it's literally that whole thing. So food is amazing. For sure. I, I've never, ever in my life ate <laughs> no food like that. You I just educated that. me, shoot. Food so Mo uh, Mardi Gras actually started in Mobile, Alabama? Yes, it did. We oh, were the crazy. first. Yeah, I didn't know that. It, I didn't it's it's kind of like one of them things, like, you know how, like, somebody hop on the song and the remix go better than the... Mm -hmm. That's kind of like what happened with like, New Orleans. Like, they kind of remixed it and, you know, sure. just kind of Like, kinda what's going up. on with house music right now? That's kind of what's going uh -huh. on, you know? Yep. But we were definitely the originators home of Mardi Gras. For yes, sure. you can talk Google to it. Us. It ain't no lie. <laughs> for sure, talk to us about that, for real. Because I sure didn't know that. 
Yeah, Mardi Gras is crazy. I love it. it. It's a it's a very very amazing experience. Um, I want to say that's the best thing about growing up in Mobile. Man, it's time for my, the whole city outside. Mm-hmm. I heard some. I heard something about Mardi Gras. Is it is it true that if um if you, some how you get your beads like you gotta <laughs> flip your shirt up? Uh, <laughs> I believe it, it, in some in some cases, yeah. Other yeah, cases you can get in trouble for that. Yeah, I heard. I you heard know, that. Some of them they ain't, they ain't playing like you mm-hmm. know. But but Joe came for it. You know you probably gonna you know. Mm-hmm. They have their places. Yes, for it's sure. more popular. I feel in New Orleans, but. Yeah, it's definitely going down the moment. Yeah, I remember my cousin <laughs> went in like oh one, and that's that's when I first heard. I was mad. I'm like five, so that's, oh yeah. yeah. But see, we throwing more than bees. Like I feel like our throws is way better. You get the right person, you get a TV. What? Yeah, they throw it. <laughs> they throw man. a TV. Man, you go to Mardi Gras, you'll get your bottle of Hennessy. You'll get you some some honey packs. You'll get you some every like they throw everything. They that not you throwing think of. Hennessy bottles. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Who? You better this catch. Crazy. I am not playing. Look, yeah, I'm what? telling you, ask somebody. You can get anything thrown out there besides teddy, teddy bears, food, a big TV. Te- man, they be throwing stuff. Ain't it nobody depends. catching that. Hey, you, <laughs> Say somebody you is. You be outside fighting. They That's be fighting over stuff. Like, damn. They be wrestling. Somebody throw a big teddy bear. Say it's for you, and somebody try to grab it. Y'all fight. You have to fight. Like that's the law. Like you gotta fight for that. Teddy. Spoken, unspoken. You gotta fight about it. What if I don't want no smoke? He's gonna, he gonna beat me up. <laughs> I mean, he's gonna, he gonna look at you like. You gotta get What you gonna do up, about man. this teddy bear? change you know what i'm saying you went from um what first what you first started at because uh seat the number six okay yeah that's what i got introduced at and then i remember the first project i heard from you know uh, twitter is a is a good powerful music source especially for up-and-coming artists so i seen the um i seen your project i think it was 16 floating around my timeline i checked it out I ain't gonna lie. I thought you was you was singing some melodies based off the artwork. <laughs> you came in. I think it opened with um like black and two or something mm-hmm. like that. Oh my yeah. god! <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh, I was not expecting that. But you were you went in though. So like, talk about first talk about the type of artist you um you were in C to number six and what can we expect from Ashley C to Banks? Can we expect the new flow, uh, same old hard vibes? What, what we getting? Uh, I would definitely say a lot of different stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, I really feel like um, C to number six kind of like shows a more aggressive side of me. Mm-hmm. Um, I started really professionally under that name. I think I was like 18. So For I sure. was kind of like still young on hot you know what i'm saying like i'm still on that like you know but as i've gotten older you know i've had a baby last year Mm -hmm. like i'm kind of like mellowed down and i'm kind of like trying to lean into a more mature state i guess trying the girly stuff i was real tomboy so that's kind of like a part of the name change Mm -hmm. um as well um actually see the banks i get that because i mean everybody say i look like the girl from Fresh Prince. I've been hearing that since eighth grade. For sure, I, I can um, see it. Yeah, I've been hearing that since eighth grade. So, I feel like also her personality—not personality, but like how she dressed, everything, like you know, the girliness about her—it kind of like coincides with what I am, mm-hmm. you know. So. For sure. So you gonna use that um, that stage name to really step into your um, to your grown woman, basically. Yeah, like I want people to hear that and be like, oh, she, you know, she do something. We don't know what she do. When you hear seat the number six, you know I rap. I don't care about you know I rap you know I'm doing something I yeah. want to be able to if you hear my name in the room you're like what does she do you know you mm-hmm. don't know if I'm an artist if I paint if I'm a poet you don't know for sure like I said I thought I was gonna get some Jean Aiko or something yeah <laughs> I, I could do that you know I could do for that sure. and, and I will say um actually see the banks that that's gonna be a more versatile me I mm-hmm. think I'm gonna lean more toward my um, melodies and whatnot because I definitely want to stray away from like the aggressive. I'm still gonna give it to you here and there, but I want to stray away from the aggressive because it's just like I'm not that anymore. You know, mm-hmm. it's there, but I'm not that anymore. Like, I feel that. I ain't out sad no more. I'm not I feel trying that. to portray that. <laughs> You spoke on on, on having your ch- first child. So how has motherhood been for you? Man, crazy. 
Beautiful. It's a very, very beautiful experience, but at the same time, it's stressful. Don't do it unless you're ready. That's what I tell people all the time. It's not something to just do and be cute. You got to really put aside your life, for For real. Like, you as a person, you die in a certain sense. Like, you have to be reborn into a whole different individual. Mm -hmm. You still have little things that, you know, you kind of remember about yourself and you kind of like from your past sense, but you're a different person now. Completely. For real, Um, ain't no manual to it either. It's no manual. It's trial and error. Um, Definitely listening to others, but having your own mind is very important that I've noticed. Uh, Motherhood is pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. And it changes you. Like, it really gives you a different go drive. Like, I don't know. Put me in the go mode for real. And you look at your kid be like, damn, that's my kid. Yeah. For real. Yeah. Just Nobody ran else to the motherfucking wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody else is Get off the couch, man. Like, my son bad, but he's smart. So it's like, and he's cute. So you're like, damn, you're cute. Uh, <laughs> and you get to realize every time your mother told you, like, you don't understand when you get older. You mm-hmm. understand that. Yeah. Like, when she tell you, like, it's food in there already cooked. I ain't cooking nothing else. Exactly. You know? Man. You know McDonald's you. today. <laughs> and my baby, he act just like me. He's only one. He's really tall for a one year old, so mm-hmm. I'm constantly like running behind him. Everybody's like, next year he's gonna be holding you. Like my baby, I think. What you think? You think Julian Reach? You think he all taller than this table? I think he almost yeah. as tall as this table. Yeah, he's almost as tall as this table. Yeah. De- <laughs> definitely, you got probably a big one, yo. Yeah, he almost three feet. He running around with a football or basketball yet? Um, he's running around with something. For sure. He a- anything he can get his hands on, he want to throw it. I think he gonna play baseball. Oh yeah, for sure. Baseball or soccer, he show a lot that he good with his hands and his mm-hmm. feet. But he loves like sports balls, basketballs, baseball, anything round, bouncy. Did having your son did that influence your name change also? Yeah, yeah, because I want. I don't want him to be like, and this is like no offense to nobody else like that, rapping them like that because everybody got their own vices. But it's like, I want to be like, you know, oh, her, but look, her. you know, I want him to be like, you know, it's still mommy. Like, right. it's that's still my mom. But mm-hmm. like, I don't want him to confuse it. I want it to be like the same person in a way. Like, it's different. I can't explain it, but I don't know. I want it to be softer to him because mm-hmm. it's going to surprise him later when everybody else tell him, you know, oh, your mama not. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you ever saw that picture? Uh, Queen Latifah. They had two Queen Latifahs. They had the one from Set It Off. Then they had the yeah. one talk about uh, when when my mom was raising my siblings versus when she versus raised she's me. raising me. <laughs> yeah, that's how I'm trying to do that. Uh, I'm trying to like play it out. My brothers is already like, we gonna tell him like you can't play like this forever. And I'm like, I'm gonna try. I want sure. him to think I make like, cakes. And good luck with that. One. Good, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> You know, because once kids get older, you know, Google, YouTube, they definitely smarter than we and were. And that's why I'm trying, you know, I, mm-hmm. I want to clean it up because it, it's it's bigger than my son, too. Mm-hmm. I Absolutely. have nieces and nephews that watch me, whether I realize it or not. They see me, and what if they want to mimic that? What mm-hmm. if, they, you know, I want to just make sure, and other people's kids as well, um, it's already a thing where I feel like people are influencing kids to do a lot of stupid stuff For through sure. music. Like, music is the most powerful thing. It literally, because it reaches every person, every language, it don't matter. Absolutely. Music is music. It's that communication. So mm-hmm. I don't want to communicate to people, yeah, let's go outside, let's do drills, let's do, no, we got money to make, you know, it's mm-hmm. stuff to do in life. It's more to life than killing people and hurting people and doing stupid stuff. Absolutely. That's all I'm And saying. then the growth is documented as well, you know what I'm saying, personally yeah. and uh, digitally, you know what Yeah, because in my man, I too was where you was, you know, I'm, let's do what we house at. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I, I don't want to do that. No <laughs> He's absolutely. different. For sure. You know, it's 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 dope that you said that because a lot of artists like when they when they make they splash in the world, they first thing is I am not a role model, mm-hmm. and I tell people all the time like as an adult, I know music influenced people, but you as a are. teenager, I was like, man, music ain't influencing me, and it was, <laughs> yeah, you know, I was, I was out here saying. doing whatever the music said. So right. it's dope that you you got that mind state and you you conscious of that because a lot of artists they be like, man, I'm just gonna live my life. If you're not careful, you'll wake up angry as hell every day. Like, it's it's what you listen to. Absolutely. Like, like once again, no offense. When I listen to certain, because I still love their music, but it's a time for everything. I can't wake up at 8 o'clock in the morning and turn on Young Boy. I just can't because <laughs> I'm going to beat somebody up by the end of the day. Like, like, well, sure. like, not literally, but, you know, like, you just have that natural aggression that's already under 
inside you from listening to that music. It's pushing. Yeah. It's it's pushing into you. Whether you do it, so if I don't want to be a role, no, I don't want to be no role model. I don't want to pair nobody else's kids. I barely want to pair my own. But I'm already knowing at some point it's gonna have some type of influence. So why not be on the right side of it mm-hmm. than the latter? You know. Sure. And speaking of young boy, you see the um, decompressing process he doing with exactly. It. And that's that's number one though, the honesty and because it was like no denying that like you could not no. escape this man's music nowhere. No. He, he yeah. ran regions. What? These kids walk like him. Like, I watched kids walk like him, talk like him, dress like him, like they were him. And it was scary because I hadn't seen nothing like that in in a long time. For real. Like, in a long time. I think the last time I seen something, that was Keith. Mm -hmm. That was the last time I seen something like that, Keith. Real talk. Changed everybody, changed the world. Everybody want to dress like Keith. Everybody want to be self-like. So it was crazy to see somebody else come almost around the same age Mm -hmm. that Keith was. Had a, almost the same impact, like sure. literally the same. Impact. I feel like his impact was way OD though, because it was in it was in air where then you know yeah, social media Africa. went up, man, for real. So, man, I don't know. How do you balance, you know, motherhood and being an artist? Because being a mother is a full time job. It's full time. I'm a single mom, so it's it's full time. But I will say it's just all about balance. I guess I have my mom or my dad like keep my baby. I go an hour to the studio. Hour to the studio, that's probably like a song or two. If I have it pre-written, it's probably like three songs mm-hmm. I can get. You know, maybe two hours at the studio. You know, I just kind of plan everything out. I book projects. So I hit my studio, my, my guy, my producer, I'm like, hey, I want to do a 10-song project. I'll give him $1,000. I come in, I lock in for like a week. Mm-hmm. Get the project done in a week. I got content for a while. So sure. it's, it's, it's about balance. You just got to find what works for you. And so that's what works for me. For sure. Now you say you got a um a, a producer uh, engineer down there in Texas. Uh, yes. Talk Cuddy, about him for Cuddy, a moment. Yeah, Les locking Cuddy. in with him. Les Cuddy, that man is a gift. I will tell you that he can do everything. He does everything for me. He does my beats. We do everything from scratch. Everything is in house, done on the spot. Beats, videos. He shoots my videos mm-hmm. like. He mix and masters my songs, like he edits my pictures, he does everything. Like For Cuddy sure. is a one stop shop. That man is amazing. For sure that, He's uh, amazing. Definitely a gem. Now when you come back to Chicago, who are some um like producers, studios, artists, and anything that you um uh, lock in with? Well, I'm gonna be honest, I don't really move around too much when I'm here, but mm-hmm. I do know of some great producers like Jay Noir is crazy. For sure that. Go Hayes is crazy. For sure that. Um Juwan. He's crazy. Uh, it's another one. It's somebody else I'm missing. I'm already knowing. But they got some rip. Even my homie, 18, he don't want to admit that he, you know, do a little producer, producer work. <laughs> For sure. He raw on that, too. You know, he's really an artist. Uh-huh. But he, he's raw on that, too. For sure that. Your Sound Radio, we back in the building. Yes, sir. We check it back in with Ashley Cinta Banks in the building. Now, um, do you ever think of yourself as um, being from all these, uh, having all these cultural backgrounds, you know, experience in Texas, uh, growing up in Mobile, Alabama, his time in Chicago? Uh, do you ever think of yourself as like you can you can knit those regions together with your music? Yeah. How would you go about doing that? Um, I really feel like from beats to cadence to you know just the style of everything mm-hmm. you can kind of take something from everywhere and sure. it blend beautifully in For a way sure. uh-huh like like say if like one day you just in the booth and you feeling yourself then you just do like a, a throw some d sample mm-hmm. you know a freestyle like that that's that's mm-hmm. a way of paying homage you know what i'm saying yeah even stuff like samples uh-huh. samples really kind of help you do that like Absolutely. i could take for example to throw some d's or i could do her I can do that and put him on a sample to like a, what's the word I'm looking for? A bounce. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Put him on that. And then my cadence could be like the Texas style. Like it'll it'll go because it's just everything doing its own thing, but it's blending together decently. So. For sure. It's bounce. Um, and speaking of bounce, is that actually big in uh, Mobile? Oh, yeah. Bounce music? Because yeah. didn't that, like, that originate in New Orleans? Um, I, 
I don't want to get into the originator of that because I don't know. For so sure. I don't want to lay on nobody. <laughs> I but I do know that we do listen to it. And Mobile is very popular, especially because it's like in Mardi Gras music. You know, they got to make that do what you want music. You know, Absolutely. all of that. We listen to it. So. For sure. <laughs> All right, now, obviously you're making music for a reason. Now, let's say the moment comes. It may come next year. It may come five years from now. Well, you on everybody TV screen. You on everybody phone. You the topic of discussion. Mm-hmm. Are you ready for fame? Honestly, sometimes, yes. Other times, no. I don't think anybody is truly ready for fame, if you think about it. Because mm-hmm. it's like you think you're ready for the basics, and then you have people breaking into your house. You know what I'm saying? Or you have people following your kids to school. Exactly. Or who, who really is ready for fame? You exactly. have people stalking your grandma who's dead. Like, you know what I mean? Exactly. How are you ready for fame? Exactly. Fuck I don't think anybody is ready. But am I ready to be in a, in a more elevated position in my life? Definitely. Am I ready to move into that avenue of making music my professional every day? This is my job. Waking up, eat, sleep. This is what I do. Mm. Yes. Definitely, I'm ready for that part. For sure. There's so many sustainable ways for um, success in music. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You can find an outlet. Some people go go rap, turn executive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, what's success in um, music with you? For me, I'm going to be honest. I really, I, I like rap. Don't get me wrong. I'm good at it. But I want to act. I want to act. I want to produce. I want to write. I've been working on a comic book for a while. Like, I want to kind of dip into everything uh I can't think of the word right now because my mind will go blank, but, like, the people who had their own shows. Mm-hmm. I want to be, like, a TV host, have my own show. Not the Wendy Williams type, but, you know, you get the point. For sure, that Steve yeah. Harvey family. The respectable Steve, one. I love Steve Harvey. <laughs> oh. Anybody, all my friends that just seen that, you just said Steve Harvey, they probably like, oh, my gosh, she finna embarrass us. <laughs> <laughs> you talking about Harvey. Steve Harvey all day. I love Steve That's Harvey. a legend. <laughs> I love Steve Harvey. For sure. <laughs> That's a legend. I know they really pray like I don't really do this, but they like, oh my God, please don't say Steve. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. hilarious. Love Uncle Steve. All Love right. Uncle Steve. All, All right. right, this is my favorite question right here. Oh. If you can go back and give your younger self any advice, what would it be? Slow down. You doing everything you need to do right now. Appreciate what you got in front of you. Have you yeah. learned to do that now? Yeah. Yeah, because I'm going to be honest, like, even just in music, as a shorty starting out with this music stuff, like, first of all, social media, we're exposed to millions and thousands of millions of people that we really are never going to see for real. Absolutely. But it's a pressure because it's so many people, and you got other people that are trying to do the same thing as you, and they're getting access to these more millions. And, you know, you kind of feel like you're in a competition that really isn't existing. Absolutely. So you kind of miss out on what you got in front of you trying to keep up with somebody that's doing something. That you don't know what they're doing. You don't know if they're paying promotion. You know what I'm saying? You don't know what's going on over there. You just see the views. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for me, definitely, I've learned to kind of just focus. It's like driving. Just focus on my own lane, appreciate what I'm doing, take my time, small steps. Mm-hmm. And it's gonna work out, you know. You being your prime, what do you realize now? You you a miss out. No, absolutely, you definitely a miss out on your moment chasing something very intangible. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. So what um what can listeners expect from you for the rest of the year? You got any uh, projects dropping? What's yeah. what's going on with Ashley C to Banks? The I re-brand? have a lot of pro- I don't, don't want to say a lot of projects, but I got some nice stuff coming. Um, I have a project called Girl Next Door. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and give it to you guys. Talk to him. Got it here first. It's called Girl Next Door, and it's gonna be coming out pretty soon. Um, I have a single coming out called Peas on Clearance. That's kind of going to introduce everything and get the ball rolling. For you sure. know, new music video coming soon. Um, I definitely want to get some more videos out because I haven't really done too many. I'm kind of shy. <laughs> For sure that. <laughs> but, yeah, definitely some more music coming this year. For sure. You got uh, any videos in the vault? Yeah, the the Peas on Clearance video, that's going to drop. And then I said I'm going to shoot some more after that. So I ain't going to lie. I'm one in. You got the trip. I'm one in. But mm, it's, it's early decent, in the though. year. You know? Yeah, it's it's first quarter still. So I yeah. got some time, but I'm definitely trying to pick up the pace for real. Definitely. All right, before we get out of here, tell the people how they get in tune with you, stay in tune with you, find everything you got going on. Okay. Uh on Instagram, get at me, Ashley Seat the Banks. Uh Apple Music is still under seat the number six, so don't miss out trying to look me up on there. Mm-hmm. But uh I'm gonna get my YouTube back on. I don't really do YouTube, but yeah, Instagram is my main thing right now. Instagram and Apple Music. For sure. Check me out on that. All right, Jimmy, talk to the people. Yes, sir. Hey, shout out Ashley Cita Banks for coming through Ill Sound Radio. You know, we appreciate your time and everything. I know you said um, you was going to be pretty shy, but like I said, you handled it very well. Oh, 
Thank you. You know what I'm saying? You kept us filled with conversation, you know, and it's and it's good to learn a, um, a good cultural background, you know what I'm saying? Because people come from all walks of life, and um, we don't all. sometimes we don't always get that pleasure to uh, bring it all together, you know? So, like, right. you can use yourself to, to do something like that, you know, right. whether it's music, whether it's impact over there. Just like how you um, informed me and Jay that uh, Mardi Gras started in Mobile, Alabama. Didn't know that. Did not know that at all, you know what I'm saying? So... That, that's what's up for real and i wish you i wish you the best on your rebrand you know like we we hit a grow sometimes you know like life give and take you know what right. i'm saying life definitely gives and takes like you you and your giving season you know it's right. your your past with whether what you went through with see the number bank uh i said see the number banks <laughs> see the, see the that number six yeah that low key slide but uh see the number six you know you you probably went through a, a lot just like off the scenes you know what i'm right. saying that force uh, a rebirth in you outside yeah. of rap. You know what I'm saying. So yeah. like life, give and take. You know, step into your giving season and keep growing. You know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a good year for you. You lining yourself up. So keep Definitely. it going. Thank you. For Thank sure that. Absolutely. And uh, make sure y'all follow me, Groove Nuke G R O O V N U K E. Follow Ill Sound Radio. Free promo February kicking off right now. So um, submissions closed. It's submission closed. Man, man, he said it was too many. He said it was too many people. Ah, yeah, we loading up, man. Yeah. But hey, if you missed it, you missed it. <laughs> For sure. Man. Shout out to everybody Sorry. in the free promo February. But y'all know, even then, make sure y'all submit y'all music to uh, Illinois Radio. We stream music twenty four seven. Make sure y'all submit music to the site. We'll check the submissions, get it up. And Jay, what you got to say to him? Man, salute to you, young lady. For sure. <laughs> it's it's. Every artist has something special to give to the world, you know. But it's up to that artist to find what's special about them and then deliver that to the world. Mm -hmm. So with you still growing as an artist, like, your selling is, is so high. Never get frustrated. Never give up on it, you know. Even on those, those tough days when you don't want to do it, find yourself writing about not wanting to do it, right. you know. Because once you get caught in that frustration, like, it, it started to be a little whirlwind, you know what I'm saying. And you... A mother so that comes with its own challenges but i will say it does get easier when they can go get in the refrigerator they self you mm -hmm. know they can <laughs> and they go can, give me something there too. you go and get a little bit easy oh, yeah. you know but yeah. right now is the 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 time to lay those stones you know for them to be a good person you know a good right. human so man salute to you everything you got going on we look forward to hearing more from you and we look forward to seeing you up here again yeah, for definitely. Sure I'm for definitely sure coming that. back. Thank y'all so much for having me. Thank you for I was sliding. definitely nervous, but y'all killed that. So oh, yes, thank, you. Sure. thank you. Appreciate that. Sliding. Appreciate that. Now on the way out, I'm play seven, six, seven, eight, and let me find out. Okay. Play cool, both cool, them cool, joints cool, back cool. to back. So low key, let me find out. That sounds like a Alabama reference. That's what uh that's a Dobie track. Let me find you ever heard that? Let I actually out. you know what, Dobie was one of my favorite reps for a long time. Yeah, he hard, Rest I ain't gonna lie. For sure. He's he was up there for sure. For sure that. <laughs> Man, <laughs> that's once what, again, that's homage right there. Salute Ashley C to Banks. Yes, Go sir. scream C to number six too. <laughs> <laughs>